This is my family's 2008 Honda Accord LX. And it's had a problem with the BSA light showing on the dashboard. And I've tried multiple things online, but only one thing actually really did work. This particular Accord is the LX model. It's four cylinder, 2.4 liter engine, puts out 177 horsepower and 161 pound feet of torque. Now it's not a lot of power, but mated with this five speed transmission, it gets 21 miles per gallon in the city, 31 miles per gallon on the freeway, making it more or less a good commuter's car. And it's a Honda, so you know it's going to last forever. Now, while the car may have a few dents and dings in it, it is still a very drivable and reliable car. So when an error message on the dashboard saying VSA pops up with an exclamation point and a triangle, it makes me wonder what's going on with my car and how can I fix it? The VSA and anti-lock brake system help our wheels keep our vehicle safe. Your ABS or anti-lock braking system is more widely known on cars for doing what it says preventing your braking system from locking up when you slam on the brakes, actually helping your car to stop sooner. And your VSA, or Vehicle Stability Assist, is a control that controls steering angle, ladder tree, yaw movement. This is very important for safety for making you not spin out. It helps you prevent from oversteer or understeer. Both the ABS and VSA is important for vehicle safety and overall traction and control. So with the VSA warning going off, how do we actually diagnose and figure out what's wrong with the car and repair it? With any electronic repair on your car, the first place you wanna check is the fuse box. This will save you the most time and money trying to repair anything on your car. There's three areas where the fuse box is on an Accord. The first spot is under the dashboard right here. The second spot is under the hood right here. This is on the driver's side of the car, pretty easy to access. You have a clamp right here, pull it up. You have a clamp right here. And this will just pull up and you have access to the fuses. And the third is inside the passenger door right down here. You have a cover, you can just remove the cover and you got access to the fuse box. For me, I did check the fuses and they were not the problem. I also tried thing where you turn the steering wheel all the way one way, all the way the other way. It didn't work either. And the other thing I tried to do is try to jump the OBT port. The OBD2 port is right here under the driver's side, under the dashboard. You can connect that with a reader to figure out codes and figure out a bunch of stuff. There is a method to reset the ABS and VSA warning by jumping a few of the ports here and connecting it to the car, but that didn't work for me either. Now what I actually had to do is have somebody plug in their OBD2 port reader into the car and read out the error codes. Two of them were related to the wheel sensors for the rear and the third one was related to the brake light sensor. And the only way to really repair the car is to replace those parts. In order to read an OBD2 port, you need a scanner. I didn't want to buy one myself, so I went to Smog Pros. They're in Valencia, California, so if you need your car smog, go and check them out. While we're at it, they're inside the Valencia Car Wash Center, so you can get your car wash, oil change, you can go to Big John's Performance, get your tires changed, get your brakes done. This is a good place to go. And by the way, this Mexican place, really, 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 really good. And um, yeah, if you come by here, Jameson Computers, that's where I fix computers daily. Shout out to Smog Pro for helping me with my codes. Now that you know this information, it's time to get down and drape. Order your wheel speed sensor. You can get these on eBay. You can get a set of four front and rear for under $50, maybe around $50, $55 with shipping. Pay attention. This is for the front. This is for the rear. They're two completely different sizes. If you put the front one in the rear one, you're going to have an issue driving. The car's going to have no power and it's going to stall everywhere. And if you put the rear one one in the front, your car more likely won't work. This more likely won't fit. Now I've saved my old ones so I can show you where they're at and the size difference. But what you're gonna need is a 10 millimeter, a 12 millimeter, your tire iron, which I prefer this four way, and something to jack the car up with. When setting the parking brake, pull it all the way back. Make sure your jack is lined up where it should be. And then you're going to pump up the jam. Pump it up. With your tire off the ground, you're gonna loosen up your lug nuts just a little bit, and then you're going to lift up your tire completely off of the ground to the point where it can spin freely. And I prefer to take off this top one last. 
because if you do the bottom one last, it's a little bit tougher. For the front wheel speed sensors, you're gonna need just your 10 millimeter. Over by your shocks, you're going to unclip it. You just push in the tab like you would on any other ones. You might wanna use a flat head screwdriver to loosen this up. There's a clutch right there. You don't actually need to replace this part. Then you use your 10 millimeter to loosen up this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. And then you'll pull it out. Just give a little bit of force to pull it out. If your new cable kit comes with these, you don't have to reset these brackets. And then after you're done, you just put the screws back in the hole and you screw down the brackets. And that's that's about it for the front wheels. To put the wheels back on, you do it on a star method. Just tighten this up just a little bit. Choose not the ones right next to it. Go to a cross. And this is the star method. Use the star method so you don't put any undue stress on the wheels and as they're going up against the rotor. I would tighten them up in the star-like manner. And of course, don't forget to clip this back into place and it's in there once it makes that clicking noise. And make sure your car is clear so when you loosen up your jack, nothing's around it. Once your jack's out, you can just finish tightening up the wheel lugs, make sure that they're on tight. Now the process is pretty much the same for the back, except you'll have to use the 12 millimeter for the one in the middle. It's a little bit harder to unclip from the top, but you can still unclip it. And like I said, you can reuse the clips that are on there if you don't damage them. Your new kit should come with a new one. And then there's a 10 millimeter right down there. The process otherwise is the same. Take the wheel off, get clear access. You don't wanna be working around the wheel. Plus it's right on the inside of the wheel well. So it's gonna be hard to do it without pulling off the wheel. And the final step would be take your car on a test drive for a few miles, see if the VSA warning light gets turned off. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to go back, check your OBD2 scanner, is there any other error codes? Now, if it stays on like it did with me, there was something else that had to be repaired. It was the brake light switch, which I made another video. You can go check it out. For me, it required both repairs to really clear out that VSA light. If it didn't work, it might actually be the VSA module itself. Every car is different. It could be different for you. Thank you guys so much for stopping on by. If you enjoyed this, if this helped you out, figure out how to repair your car's problem. Let me know in the comment below. Let me know your experiences with fixing your car. Stick around for part two if you needed the brake switch light to be replaced. And if this really helped out, a comment, subscribe, like would help out. This has been Lance, the ultimate postman. I'll catch you next time.